Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. I'm Nick, and in this video, I'm in the great outdoors here, sitting by the telescope to look at a new feature in the ASI Air version 2.0 release, the camera rotation assist feature in the Sky Atlas. Now I'm out here with a rig that I don't have set up too often. Here I've got the SV Boney SV503 102ED scope. I actually did a review of that uh, a few weeks back. And in this case, I've got it out because unlike the Rasa, which is my normal imaging scope, this one actually has a camera rotation function on it uh, instead of on the Rasa where it's a little bit cumbersome. I've gone over that a few times on the channel where in order to rotate the camera, you have to loosen a, uh, a retaining ring. You have to then make sure the cables are properly dressed uh, by the camera because after all, the camera is in front of the corrector plate and those cables don't want to be in the, the path of the optics, at least in uh, unexpected ways. So tonight I've got this SV Boney scope set up. It's uh, actually great for imaging as well, but for tonight, we're just going to be looking at the camera rotation assist function in the ASI Air. I will say my setup here is a, a little bit all over the place. I've got cables hanging down, uh, no guide scope, I've got the ASI Air sitting on the, uh, the tripod tray, uh, just kind of a hodgepodge around here. So uh, please don't look at this and think, ah, oh, that's the way we should set up an astrophotography rig. Definitely not. This is temporary. I'm planning to take this off and stick the Ross on later on in the night uh, for uh, another project that I'm working on currently. So camera rotation is something I haven't covered in depth on the channel before, mainly because of the cumbersome nature of rotating the camera on the Rasa. But I do want to mention one thing with the angles that we're talking about here. People often ask, well, why is this angle 90 degrees instead of zero degrees? Well, here I've got the camera set up with what looks like you, you'd think this was a horizontal view. You can read the ZWO lettering on it. That seems uh, upright compared to the horizon and the, uh, the overall orientation of the scope. However, it might be surprising to learn that this is 90 degrees. In fact, in the ASI Air app right now, I've got this plate solved and we're at 90, uh, 90 degrees exactly on the rotation. Now, the reason for that, notice how this box is oriented versus the lines of right ascension and declination. So the lines of declination are basically how far away from Polaris you are in the sky kind of like lines of latitude on Earth. And the lines of right ascension, which are going from the upper left to the lower right here, all of those point back to Polaris. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere part of the sky, the southern celestial sphere, it's pointing towards a southern celestial pole uh, near Sigma Octans. The reason this is considered 90 degrees, as far as I can tell, we're talking about polar rotation coordinates. Not something terrestrial, but it's polar. So in this case, what would be considered the top of the frame is pointed 90 degrees away from Polaris. It's uh, parallel, the top of the frame is parallel to this 34 degrees declination line. If we were to rotate that, in this case, counterclockwise by 90 degrees, then we'd be at zero rotation. So on the scope here, that would mean rotating this this way by 90 degrees and we'd be at zero degrees. So that's something you may have run into when you're framing up an object in Telescopius or in the ASI Air. Uh, you set up your scope, set up the camera with the rotation that you thought was correct, and it turns out it's off by 90 degrees. And that, of course, can ruin a mosaic and things like that. But I would say that in the ASI Air app now, this is very easy to correct for if you've made a mistake or if you're going for a very precise framing of an object and you want to get it just right, this is a way to do it and make it repeatable from night to night, which is pretty exciting. All right, so let's get started. I'm in the constellation of Orijah, the charioteer. I'm near the Flaming Star Nebula and the Tadpoles Nebula. Now, let's say I've got my camera set up here. This, by the way, is the ASI 1600mm Pro. Let's say I wanted to focus on a particular part of the Flaming Star Nebula, and I wanted to rotate, and this is in fact what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be going to zero degrees rotation instead of 90 in order to get this uh, brighter part of the nebula framed up. So what I'm going to do is, you can do this one of two ways. I'm going to go to the upper right here, where we have the compass, the mosaic, and the rotate option. I'm going to hit rotate. And here, uh, when you click that, you have got a uh, kind of a slider bar that comes up. And you can change the rotation of the target box. Remember, the blue box is the scope. That's a plate-solved box. It knows exactly where it's pointed and what the rotation is. 
The red box is where you want to be, where you want to go, how you want your frame to look. So we can move our red box around and change the rotation. Now, as we rotate this, let's bring it to about zero degrees. Now you could be very accurate with this and make it five degrees or 5.2, something like that. We're just gonna go for zero. Now, that's what we want to do. And in order to do it, on the left-hand side of the screen is this frame option. And that is the camera rotation assist function. So we're gonna hit that. And now we have an interface coming up here, which shows us three things. At the top is 0.1, the target. That's the rotation that we want. Close enough to zero, we could uh, dial it in to be exactly zero if we wanted. We also have in the middle here, CCW. That means counterclockwise, meaning we're gonna have to rotate the camera counterclockwise by 89.9 degrees, roughly 90 degrees in order to make this happen. You can see down here as well, options for refresh and auto. Now, if you hit auto, this is gonna be constantly taking images, plate solving them, and then updating the rotation of the blue box. I'm gonna be using refresh manually, and that's something I also do in polar alignment as well, which some people were surprised at when I put out my polar alignment tutorial. They said, why aren't you using the auto refresh feature? And I just like to be able to say, okay, I've done everything I wanna do, the scope has settled, now I'm going to hit refresh and have it do that. Definitely user's preference, but I like to do it uh, maybe a little bit more slowly but uh, have a little bit more control over when it's taking the image. So let's go for it. I've loosened the retaining screw here, the set screw on top. Now, when you're rotating your optical train, you don't wanna be grabbing the camera. You definitely don't wanna be grabbing the focuser. Uh, really don't wanna be grabbing anything except what I'm gonna grab here is this like heavily reinforced part of the scope that's able to rotate. So we're gonna go counter clockwise. So we rotate it, we're gonna go Roughly 90 degrees, let's see. All right, we got it set there. Let's hit refresh. And it updates. Okay, so now the target is still at zero and we actually over rotated by about 10 degrees. So that's okay. Now notice it's not CCW, it's CW for clockwise. So we're gonna go clockwise, 10 degrees. Might be a little bit much, but let's refresh. Getting close, 3.2 clockwise. Give it another nudge here. Close enough. Now anything below two degrees, it's gonna turn green on the numbering instead of red. So I, I would say within two degrees is pretty good. Now, in the case of a mosaic or something like that, that may be a little bit uh, more delicate and you'd want to be a lot more precise with the alignment. Uh, but yeah, 0.2 degrees off, I'd say that's going to be just fine. Notice when I'm in the frame option here, this is inside the camera rotation assist function, I can't actually slew anywhere on the Sky Atlas. So in order to exit out of this function, we can hit the frame, the green frame box again, and that brings us back to our normal view. So let's say we wanted to now go to our view of the flaming star and the scope nudges. It's going to plate solve and see where we are. And we're at 0.3 rotation. Now that's 0.3. It's almost zero because now the top of the frame, what would be considered the top, is now pointed towards Polaris. And notice also on the scope, we have the scope towards Oriji here, the camera rotated over this way and so that the top of the camera is actually pointed towards Polaris, which is right over there. It's not exact because of the angles in the sky, but visually you can kind of see how that alignment system works. Now with something like the 533, which is a square sensor, this isn't gonna matter quite as much what's up or to the side or things like that, as long as you have the angle correct. And also with something with an oblong sensor, you can also get away with being 180 degrees off. Now I had done that rotation assist using first this rotate option out here in the main Sky Atlas interface. You can also adjust the frame rotation within that frame option on the left. You can go in and on the right hand side, there's this slider bar where you can rotate it there. So you could rotate it any which way, however you might want it to be. Something else I noticed in the rotate function here, if I rotate, and then go into the framing 
and then come back out of the framing, it actually forgets what angle of rotation you had in there before. But if you bring it up again, and then just lightly click on it, it's gonna be close. And in fact, you can make note of what the actual number was. So it may be a bug there. Uh, it does update eventually, or once you tap on it, uh, but graphically it hasn't updated yet, although it does retain the numerical number of the rotation that you wanted. So one note as well, I had noted in my mosaic planning video that in Sky Atlas, it depends what mode you're on in the home screen that determines what features are available within Sky Atlas. And that's the case here as well. I'm currently in preview mode back on the home screen. If I were to go to plan mode and go back into the Sky Atlas, there's no frame option on the left hand side. There is still the rotate option at the upper right, but here in plan mode, we don't have the frame option on the lower left that's actually the camera rotation assist feature. So as far as I can tell, that's only in preview mode that you're gonna find that. Now, let's say you wanted to match the rotation from a previous image that you had taken. I believe the easiest way to do that is in preview mode to have taken an image with the correct framing that you wanted. Let's do that here. And there's our image of our current field of view. Now, let's say we'd done that on a different night. Let's say we save that to the memory of the ASIR. Now, if I go into image management and in preview, I now have a saved frame here. In the information, here we can see you have the center RA, the center deck, and also the angle of the camera when this frame was taken. So that could be very useful in looking at a previous uh, image and saying, oh, I want to match up the exact framing and rotation. How do I do that? This would be a good way to do that. Now, this is quite powerful. It's not fully complete as far as I can tell. Specifically, I'd be interested in a way to really match the rotation of images I took years ago to plate solve them here in the ASIR or perhaps send them maybe via the community option in order to have them on the system here and then match the rotation here on the ASIR. It seems to be a little bit more things that have been done since this rotation option became available that have the angle saved in there. It doesn't seem like some of the older things do. So that's something I'd be interested in. Of course, I can also just compare the framing of, of things beforehand and try and figure out exactly how best to match it up in the app. But something like that would be nice. Maybe they display at the correct rotation, maybe a custom object that I've made in the past. It would display at the correct uh, rotation within the Sky Atlas feature. But certainly for what it is, very powerful, and I'm looking forward to using it. Definitely something I'll take advantage of, especially when I'm using a scope uh, like this that has the ability to rotate easily. So I hope this was useful for you. Hopefully you're able to uh, dig into this version 2.0 a little bit more as well. But let me know in the comments, are you using this feature? How do you like it? What more would you like to see? Uh, anything that I missed in here that is uh, perhaps useful or maybe not so useful, things you'd like to see improved. And also, what else would you like to see with camera rotation? Of course, everybody would like a uh, electronic auto rotator as part of the ZWO ecosystem. So uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get one of those someday. Otherwise, that's all for now. Clear skies. We'll see you next time.